Moving in Authority with Bishop Stephen A. Davis. You have been born again and you've been given all the benefits and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about benefits. Healing is a benefit for those who are in the kingdom. Healing is a benefit. Now, I know you know the benefits on your occupation, your career. But do you know your benefits in the kingdom of God? We interact with so many people who are not born again. We can begin to take on characteristics and embrace some of the suffering that they're embracing. Well, the uh, Egyptians were being afflicted because they were holding on to God's people, which represented God's purpose. And when God wanted his people, which represented his purpose, freed, affliction came on the Egyptians in order to weaken them so that God's people would go free. So all those plagues that, that came on Pharaoh and on Egypt were intended to, intended to weaken them so that God's people would go free. When God's people left Egypt, there was nobody sick and there was nobody poor. When they left, they were well. Because that was God's intentions. He was, his intentions was to release them, but he had to afflict their oppressor. So we have to be careful when we, we start saying, my cancer. That's not your cancer as a born-again believer. I'm going to be pretty bold in this, okay? It is not your cancer. It is not your sugar diabetes. It is not your high blood pressure. All those uh, physical sufferings are not yours. Those were never intended for you. God had no intentions for you to suffer in that capacity. I'm going to go a step further. You know, I know we learn from some things, but I don't want to, I don't want to learn from cancer. That's very tormenting to my family. That's tormenting to the people who are around me. And I, I hate cancer. I hate cancer with a vengeance. Because I've, I've lost many people that I love because of cancer. So I don't mind being bold against something that God never intended to be a part of my life. So if his word says, and I'm going to let his word overrule what I think, what I feel, what I've experienced. His, his word said he would put none of these diseases on us that he put on the Egyptians. So if it's similar in the church as it is in the world, there is a problem. There is a major problem that has to be addressed. I said on uh, watch night service, I don't have anything to lose, so I'll address it. My name's not big enough that I got to clean anything up yet. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So, so it, it has to be addressed. It has to be addressed. If we do not address it, we'll keep watching our people suffer and not fulfill their complete destiny. So we have to make up our minds. And I, and I know there may be physicians in this room or there may be physicians who are watching right now. And I have no problem with that. But the great physician, name, his name is Jesus. And he had no problem healing those who were sick. You're watching Moving in Authority with Bishop Stephen A. Davis. Here is today's powerful message. Stage four uh, cancer doesn't mean death for everyone. I got to talk to you tonight. You got you to hear me tonight. Because it, 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 it's a lesser stages that, that people are giving up over. So you have to retrain the people of God that greater is he that lives within you than what's going on in the world. Because if you forget the greater one lives on the inside of you, you'll give up like the world is giving up. You'll, you'll walk around like a hopeless people instead of hopeful people. I feel it too, mama. I feel it too. When I came down here and we were in worship, I felt at least two inches of energy flowing around me. Difficult to describe, but, but I changed my mindset when I come into services dedicated 
to the wholeness of God's people. So I, I'm not an administrator. I do that in the day uh, uh, work hours. I, I am not an entrepreneur. I do that during work hours. But I am a man of God right now that believes that the power of God is flowing in and through my life to fix anything that's physically going on with you. I do believe that. Now, if I can get my belief and your belief to connect, I believe we can have an explosion in this place tonight. I, I believe that something can happen in this place tonight. And I know you've heard so much and you've seen so much, but you can't let what you've heard and what you've seen stop what you know. So I refuse to adjust my beliefs to what's been going on around me. In fact, I'm going to heighten my belief because I need a, a bunch of young people to believe in the God that I serve. We may have lost a few good men, but there's still a major army sitting in this church tonight. And I believe that those who are, are 20 and less and maybe even up to 30, because we have some doubters up in that area, I believe that we need to get ourselves together and start believing God and praying the prayer of faith again and believing that God is able to do anything but fail. I believe that is our responsibility, not just for me to pray, but for you to pray and all of us to believe. Because if you ever find yourself in a condition, you want somebody that believes to come and lay their hands on you and pray for you. And maybe you're not right. Right there yet and you you may think you'll never get there but I want to make sure I got somebody in my life that believes God that when death is all around me that they'll come and pray the prayer of faith because my time is not up yet and I need somebody around me that believes that God is still able to do anything but fail I need somebody that has enough word on the inside of them that would declare healing over my body when I can't pray for myself when I can't say Jesus for myself when I don't even know I'm still in the world. I need somebody that will believe God enough that they can raise me up from that place. <laughs> I believe we've done ourselves an injustice. All we let people do is preach to us now. And we're satisfied with the preacher coming to the book board, doing a little preaching, a little teaching, and then walk, go back to his office. But what about what comes after the word? There should be manifestation after the word. Where is a manifestation? I, I heard what you preached, but do you believe what you preached? We have to put the pressure back on the pulpit. Now you believe it, let's see it. Let's see something happen, man of God. You said you believe it, now lay hands on us. Let God work, but you gotta do your part. If they laid hands, why aren't we laying hands anymore? We ain't taking you in a back room somewhere. Let's do it right here. Let's see God do something right here. We're not gonna have private failure. We're gonna have public success. I never saw what Jesus took somebody, okay, let's go around the corner, let's see if this works and we'll come back out and announce it to everyone. You want people to tear the roof off to get the lame healed, you gotta have something going on in the house. You're not gonna get me to forget about what I read in my Bible. not about a show. I don't want you entertaining me while I'm dying. I want you healing me. I don't want no sweet music to make me relax and go on out early. I still got destiny in my life. I still got a road to walk. I still got about interrupt something in my life don't make it easy on me pull me out of the bed I want to get out of the bed I just need some help just need just need somebody to believe this is kingdom stuff you want to know this this is this is kingdom stuff
while my father was alive, Bishop Long, I was fighting with this thing. I was fighting with this thing. I said, Dad, I got to do something. Dad, he said, just calm down. Just calm down. Calm down. He kept, he kept telling me to calm down. I, I lost two brothers in a week. He was telling me, just, just calm down. Don't, 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 don't move too quickly. But I, I, I want to say enough is enough. When you have more Christians going in for, for treatments than worldly people, enough is enough, somebody. Then you're going to cross over and take men's dreams by taking their sons while the fathers are still here. Time for us to be the, the real church. And we can say it's what they put in into food. We can make excuses. But I don't believe it has to do with all those things they're trying to say it has to do. Because the Bible said, if I drink of any deadly thing, it will not harm me. So I just made up my mind that I'm going to believe the Bible. I just made up my mind that I'm tired of my brothers and sisters suffering like they're suffering and losing faith every single day when God has a book filled with promises to us and it's yes and amen. You know what? Whether I pastor or not, I'm still going to get some people healed. It ain't about pastoring the church. It ain't about a title. I don't have to have a title of a bishop. I got an anointing on my life. You got an anointing on your life. Don't go for the title. Go for the power. I said, don't go for the title. Go for the power. That same power is still available and more because we're in a double portion season. That same power and more is available. We just got to turn it up. We got to turn it up. We got to let everybody know. If you tell me you're sick, let's pray. In the name of Jesus. Because I'm going to believe God. And if you don't get anything that time, let's pray again. And if I got to pray for you every single day, it doesn't matter. I'm going to pray. Jesus prayed for that man that, had it, that was blind more than one time. He prayed for him. He sent him to wash. He came back. He saw me in his trees. Jesus prayed for him again. Don't be afraid to pray more than once. Pray until you get physical results. Don't stop praying. Don't stop believing. Don't stop declaring. Don't stop trusting God. It doesn't matter. Don't let yourself emotionally shut down because it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to turn out. Keep on. They practice medicine. Won't you practice healing? They tell us that they're practicing medicine and we won't even pray in faith for anyone anymore. Well, I don't know what I'm doing. Just lay your hands on them and say, Jesus, it's a name that's above every name. At least I know I've done my part. I'm going to do my part. You're going to do your part. This is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. I want to do something real quickly. In no disrespect, and there's no dishonor, but how many of you on prescription drugs? And I do mean prescription. Raise your hand just a little bit higher. That's, it. That's in our church, you guys. How, how often do you get prayed for by other leaders in the church? It's not okay. They told me I need to take vitamin. They told me I need to do this. I eat right. 
and I keep it moving. And I'm not telling anybody don't take vitamin. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm not telling you don't take medication. But I eat things that minister to my physical being. Based on my blood type, I eat those types of food. My body heals itself. I get a physical every single year. My blood pressure is always good. I take doses of the word every single day. And I believe the word of God. And I know it won't fail me. Will I ever get sick? There's a possibility. But I have a way of living that I am not afraid of sickness. In my life, nor yours. And I made up my mind when it's time for me to go, sickness is not going to take me. Because I would have to say, all right. I don't know if you heard, but our leader said, not yet. <laughs> he took care of a few more things before he decided, okay. I'm going to put you in the seat where you call the shots and you determine what your day is going to be like. And the first authority you're going to take is over your own body. I want to touch all of you, if you're okay with it, I want to touch every person that, that's on prescription drugs. And if I touch somebody that's just on drugs, it's going to get better. Just come on. And if y'all don't mind, I'm going to have some elders to help me as well. doesn't hurt to believe it feels even better when you receive for a couple of people they brought last night in wheelchairs. Pray for another lady. She came from what was considered a word church. She's been struggling in her health for the last year, two years, not realizing the same word that was on the inside of her was healing to her. Sometimes somebody just needs to say something. I want to say this. Every one of you standing here have enough word on the inside of you to heal you for a lifetime. We're not doing anything new. We're not saying anything new. We're just activating what's on the inside of you. That's all we're doing. Don't be afraid to believe God. I'm not going to be afraid to believe God. God doesn't fail. He doesn't fail. He can't fail. That's why I trust Him. That's why I'm over here with you guys, because God can't fail. I trust Him. asking you tonight just trust him just lift your hands and begin to worship just, just trust him 
If you'd like to order today's message, call us to get a copy today. Dial 1-800-98-JESUS. That's 1-800-985-3787. Or log on to newbirth.org. You asked for it. Now it's here. Moving in Authority now airing on YouTube. Subscribe today to the Moving in Authority YouTube channel. Catch all the latest broadcast of Moving in Authority with Bishop Stephen A. Davis on YouTube. Moving in Authority YouTube channel. when he laid hands on a thousand men. I was there with that nation of Jesus. That was a powerful move. Mm -hmm. Bishop have enriched me, have empowered me to be empowered, to be a gladiator, yes. and to not take sides, but take, take over. over. Mm -hmm. That's right. Clothes don't make me, wig don't make me, weave don't make me, teeth don't make me, God created me. If God is for me, who would dare be against me? Reject me. I'm the original, baby. If Whenever Bishop would walk into my classroom, um, my scholars would just go bonkers. You would think that he was the biggest rock star that ever existed. When you pray, you can disturb your employer. When you pray, you can mess with your mortgage. When you pray, you can get debt cancellation. When you pray, you can change the x-ray. When you pray. You can shift stuff like you ain't never shifted before. I'm in two realms at one time. You shine star. One day on the Bishop Long International Prayer Call, I end up being the one millionth caller. And unexpectedly, Bishop Long gave me a call congratulating me. And to my surprise, Bishop Long poured so much into my life in just that short conversation. Your gifts, your gifts, I said your gifts will make room for you. You might have just one gift, but you work that thing. I said you work that thing. Turn it up. Turn up. Turn up. Work that gift. 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 So all heaven and hell got to stand up and say there's a gift worker. Now is the time. Now is the time. The cycle is broken. The roof off the place. Bishop Eddie L. Long, he meant so much to us. He watched over us. As you can see, he was a true father. I was a true son, and I got a chance to experience a true father. He was a light to us. He was a star in the heavens that represented that Christ is somewhere close. Because wherever Bishop Long was, you were going to experience the presence of the Lord. So we're going into many things, and we're going to see many things because we had a great leader. And don't be surprised if you don't see and sense his presence among us because he's still here. 
just in a different form. Rejoice in this day. He didn't leave us alone. What does Apostle Long mean to me? So many things. He's just like a natural father, right? Natural father's there when you're born, there when you ride your first bike, there when you go to school, there for all those major milestones in life. And he's been there for me, every major milestone in ministry. I love the fact that he was a true spiritual father. And he loved us just like he loves you. God bless you. Hey, greetings. And this is Pastor Long from New Birth Savannah Church and sending everyone greetings, New Birth Nation, our New Birth family. Man, we are celebrating the life of Bishop Eddie Alon. We celebrate his vision. We celebrate all that God has done in and through him. And I want you to be encouraged that God is not finished. He's yet still building through us as the sons and daughters of the Most High God and those who have been birthed from the vision of new birth out of Bishop Eddie Alon. I myself found my life and my wife through the vision of Bishop Eddie L. Long. And I am complete and whole. And I thank God that one man stood and had the thoughts of God and trusted God's thoughts enough to believe and have faith in those things which the Lord showed him and he produced them. And out of that came us. And out of that, the world is so much better. So we bless the Lord for the advancement of the kingdom of God through the vision of Bishop Eddie L. Long. Hey, New Birth family, greetings. This is Bishop Lee Park. Listen, I just wanted to uh, take a moment and to share how much dad meant to me. And uh, he was a father to me. He was a spiritual leader, pastor, friend, and a mentor. He introduced me to the kingdom of God. And uh, I'm a better man today because of the life of Bishop Eddie L. Long. I cherish him always. He'll always be in my heart. I always celebrate his life. And uh, I, I live to make him proud today because I know he's watching us. I really do. I know he's watching us. And uh, I just thank God for his life. Thank God for the legacy that he's left behind. And for that, I'll ever cherish his life and, and the memories that we had together. So peace and blessings to all of you. I'll see you soon.